Uh, assalamu alaikum uh, and welcome to you all on the meeting on the role of social enterprises and startups in a crisis and recovery phase of uh, COVID-19. Uh, I hope uh, everyone can hear me. Uh, just to start off, uh, we, we, we will be soon joined by uh, Talha Chishti from the British Council, uh, Mr. Radhil Ajaz from the Ministry of IT and Telecom, and uh, uh, Ms. Amara Farooq Malik, uh, who, who is a social entrepreneur from Lahore. Uh, she'll be joining us soon. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I, I will just uh, start off uh, by requesting Dr. Vakar to give the opening remarks, and then uh, we can start the, uh, uh, the, the, the questions have been uh, put in the chat window, uh, if you can kindly see them. There are three questions. Uh, first is that, uh, what is the role that uh, we, we, we think uh, that the uh, social enterprises and startups can play uh, in this regard and uh, of course what are the hurdles and the challenges that they are facing and uh, thirdly uh, we, we wish to talk about uh, what kind of support they are looking for uh, from the government and uh, the development sector so uh, right now i'll hand over to dr bakar just to give us some opening remarks and then we'll start the discussion thank you Thank you, Ahad. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, let me uh, welcome all uh, over here. I, I do see uh, some more confirmations and our text messages do indicate that people are uh, joining gradually. I do understand that it's a Friday uh, uh, afternoon. Things can be a little slow. Everyone is adjusting to the new environment. But I deeply appreciate uh, those who have taken time out to uh, come and meet uh, on this very important subject. Of course, my uh, special thanks to uh, our colleagues, uh, Faraz Khan Sahab, uh, very noted entrepreneur, uh, Fasi Mehta Sahab, who, of course, uh, heads and looks after NIC, uh, National Incubation Center, but of course, uh, somebody whom we value very much in this space, uh, 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 the ecosystem around which we are going to talk about today. Uh, and of course, I also see some of uh, our research team members as well, and uh, some uh, are going to join. Uh, I also hear from Ahad that uh, uh, Sepla will also be joining, which is again very welcome. Uh, <clears throat> Now, from our side, basically, I think uh, the timing of this meeting is, is uh, uh, couldn't have been better. Uh, we are trying to sort of uh, uh, engage with the government, just like uh, many of you, um, around uh, uh, two or three subjects. One, of course, is uh, uh, how can we help? Uh, that's, that's the first and foremost thing as a Pakistani that one is interested in. Uh, that that's one second of course uh, we are also looking into uh, what sort of partnerships and collaborative activities the social enterprise sector can of course uh, uh, arrange on its own and i do see uh, uh, on the social media profiles as well as the posts that our colleagues are putting up uh, out there that there they already are collaborative activities shaping up. Uh, but actually to go beyond these two, of course, uh, very, very clear objective, I think uh, once uh, Ahad requests uh, our guest speakers today uh, to enlighten us, um, from my own personal point of view, I would really be inclined to know uh, how are you and your organizations coping uh, with these times? Uh, what is the innovation that is demanded over here for your organizations? Uh, of course, it is easier said than done, but uh, something which is imposed brings the best out of us. Um, and then maybe if time allows, uh, and, and, and if I think people are prepared to talk about it, uh, and then I guess we can go deeper into into the discussion that uh, how can this group as a whole uh, uh, go forward and uh, not just help the existing social enterprises who are doing great work, 
uh, of course, we see Fra Sahab's work. We also uh, we are seeing the good work done by Rizk, Sepla, Epiphany, uh, uh, all of them contributing, and many others contributing to the best of their uh, efforts. And then, more importantly, a sub question that arises is uh, how can policy help? So, government has been very keen on helping uh, this sector. Uh, we are very encouraged by the three circulars that have come from the central bank. Uh, I think all three of them are in line with what this community had been asking for for so long. And uh, somehow uh, this this is the, 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 the timing is right to maybe uh, for, for central bank to come forward and, and uh, issue those uh, notifications, which they have done now. And, and we welcome them. Uh, it, it's regarding the ease for such enterprises, uh, uh, ease from the point of view of uh, uh, credit, funding, uh, scale-up financing, uh, uh, ease in import stage, of course, uh, which, is, which is all very welcome. Uh, and Probably, I think we would like to see similar facilitation on the fiscal side and from the Treasury branch, which is FBR, uh, Ministry of Finance, Commerce Ministry. One would, uh, I, I do understand that Prime Minister's economic package is out, but uh, most of us uh, are looking for details and particularly the MSMEs, uh, social enterprises, and uh, many other segments in this, uh, even NGOs, uh, uh, are, are all, of course, uh, searching for details. And uh, in our engagement with the strategic planning cell at the PM office, we, of course, have offered help to streamline information. Uh, so whatever the government is trying to do, maybe that information is not reaching uh, the, the, the business community uh, per se. And of course, with your help, I think we want to play the role of uh, strategic communication over here. Uh, and of course, go beyond that. I think uh, many of you being in this sector will know better than us that how can policy help at this stage and which specific policy is more important uh, and, and urgent uh, at, 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 at this very uh, stage. It also depends on which sector the social enterprise operates in. We do understand that supply chain disruptions did uh, uh, bring about difficulties for various social enterprises. We did engage with the Ministry of uh, uh, Food Security and provincial food departments, and we are now glad to see that enterprises in food sector at least uh, have uh, an easier life uh, with, of course, transportation of their items opened up, and um, we are now seeing that food processing production units are also being uh, opened up. So, so, so I think. Uh, uh, I, I think probably I'll I'll just stop over here uh, by maybe adding one more uh, uh, agenda point, uh, only if it is possible for some of you to touch upon, uh, uh, and that is uh, the fact that Pakistan has requested the development partners for support. We are expecting uh, a rapid finance instrument facility from uh, the IMF to the tune of $1.4 billion. Uh, and to piggyback on this, uh, the World Bank will be supporting to the tune of somewhere around $300 million, but uh, they haven't yet consolidated the sum. Uh, ADB uh, likewise is is uh, talking about uh, uh, somewhere around five to $600 million. Uh, from within the 1.2 billion uh, that they had approved for this year uh, for Pakistan, uh, so so I, I and I'm sure many of the bilaterals would 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 also come forward. So maybe one of the ideas could be to also see that uh, how can some of this funding be channelized towards uh, the social uh, enterprise sector. So with this, uh, uh, Ahad, I can uh, uh, give it back to you. Uh, again, I welcome uh, uh, most of you over here and uh, thank you uh, for taking our time for this uh, discussion. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vakar. 
so uh, I'll also welcome here uh, Adil Sheikh Saab from uh, the Ministry of IT and Telecom and uh, Mr. Talha Chisti from British Council. Uh, so since uh, Fasi has to leave early, uh, I think we'll start off with Fasi. And uh, till that time, uh, I, I'm also, uh, uh, I'm re- uh, I am again putting the questions uh, for the discussion uh, in the chat box uh, for everyone to see. Uh, so over to you, Fasi. Thank you, Ahad. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vakar. This is uh, encouraging to see the figures that you shared, Vakar. We would like to know more about it as well. This 2.4 and 300 bill and 500 and 600 millions, uh, what portion of it? is being given to SMEs or startups or social enterprises is is going to actually define. Unfortunately, this is very testing time indeed. Uh, so far, the data that we've gathered from uh, most of our startups have taken a big hit. Um, as I was discussing yesterday with a friend as well, this is like proper economic scarring. These are very permanent scars that would be uh, very difficult to uh, wipe away, especially for small and medium enterprises. And uh, we would I would like to also request uh, uh, friends and colleagues here to share how China and other countries are fighting about it uh, other than fiscal support because we know that that won't be enough uh, to the tune of the SMEs that we have in the country and what they would be going through or the startups actually there won't be enough uh, to, to start I would say that when there would be not enough business so uh, all all these talks regarding relief all these talks regarding uh, layoffs is, is all become secondary. Uh, many countries are facing the same issues because those who are in service industry or who are purely tech uh, in, in the market serving probably uh, in the West, they have also suffered, they've taken a hit, let alone those who are in consumer goods. Some have pivoted, some are doing great work. I, I wish we, I had an answer to this at this point in time that what would be a post COVID world where businesses and the norms would change probably new regulations would be put in place to take care of our employees. Uh, uh, to, to answer the question, uh, what support is envisaged and actually uh, what are the main challenges? The main challenges first and foremost are the just the survival because there is no proper prediction anywhere, uh, let alone in Pakistan, that it would take three months or it would take six months and the economic impact, the ripple effect that would come out of it how long would that take? Would it be 12 months? People have been comparing it with 2008 financial crisis while New York Times recently published that it's nowhere any comparison that can be drawn uh, with any such recession uh, that we have seen in our lives. So uh, you cannot just predict that whether probably a $2 billion or a $500 million injection would be enough. Uh, the other thing is that while the government has announced some kind of relief packages in the previous uh, statements that the Prime Minister gave. Uh, I, for one, have reached out to the Ministry of IT uh, and Ignite and Ministry of Commerce to know actually how the startups and SMEs can benefit. And what is the definition of SMEs uh, that is being used? Because FBR, SECP, SBP all define them differently. And uh, what is the process of uh, the relief? How long is it? What's the ceiling and cap? What's the eligibility criteria? Unfortunately, I haven't gotten those responses yet. Uh, I was always told to, uh, I was always referred to the Ministry of Finance and I ended up speaking with someone there. They said we are just uh, finalizing the criteria. Perhaps we, from the industry, from the ecosystem, can help put down a proposal for the government in terms of uh, the eligibility and also to make sure that this is not like a one-off relief, but a more like a sustainable support that I believe we will need for at least the next 12 months to 18 months, um, when we will be just getting back on the feet, uh, there would be a lot of other issues to take care of. So with these thoughts, I uh, I leave with I leave you guys to have a discussion because I'm here for a, another 15, 20 minutes before the next meeting starts. But I would like love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you. Thank you, Fasi. Uh, so next up, uh, I think we'll go with uh, Deal Saab. If he can kindly uh, give his thought on the questions shared. Assalamu uh, alaikum ji. Uh, Ahad and Fasi, thank you very much. Uh, this is Adil Sheikh, Joint Director of Business Ministry of IT. Uh, Fasi must have known, uh, is aware, rather well aware of the hackathon which is taking place in NIC Islamabad. Uh, Ignite is also open for proposals. 
uh, at present under the seed fund, uh, keeping in view the present crisis and stuff. So the principal investigators they, from the industry, from the academia, uh, they may come up uh, with the ideas and for the seed funding grants. And uh, we'll ensure that the entire process of the funding uh, will be expedited and uh, projects gets approved in the shortest possible time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adil Saab. And uh, next up, I think uh, we can hear from uh, the investment point of view. Uh, Faraz uh, Khan Saab uh, is here. He's the CEO of uh, Seed Ventures. Uh, if you can uh, give your take on the three questions shared, please. Thank you, Ahad. Uh, thank you, Adil. Thank you, Faseed. Uh, Faraz Saab, thank you so much for uh, the in invitation. Um, let me just uh, tackle this uh, a from the big picture point of view and then i would actually get into the nitty-gritty of it um like fussy said this is unprecedented what's happening right now um i as an individual and we as an institution i think we have trained ourselves to look at challenges more towards uh, glass uh, half full rather than empty. And I think Pakistan as a nation overall has kind of uh, <laughs> uh, approached challenges in, in, in previous times exactly the same way. So I, let's look at it uh, as an opportunity. What are the opportunities? That is something that I would like to focus on. The challenges Fussy has kind of uh, elaborated and majority of us uh, to know the challenges of, of limited cash flow, um, startups and grassroots entrepreneurs suffering simply because of the lockdown, um, the distribution, be it the physical one, be it in terms of resources, the limitation of that is actually stifling. So this and a number of challenges I think we've been hearing um, through the players, through the stakeholders immensely. Now, what are the opportunities that I, I, I see this? I, I see there is an Im immediate attention uh, towards the digital and healthcare uh, integration with all the stakeholders. So all the digital startups and, and uh, players um, who have been actually on a, on a growth trajectory are in a fantastic position to integrate their products and services and their um, solutions uh, with wider audiences. That opens up the distribution and scale opportunity for them, uh, especially with backing of the government, uh, like SAS as an institution, like various departments, the healthcare department, the, the uh, emergency services departments, the NDMA, there are fantastic uh, startups uh, small examples like uh, uh, the risk uh, startup, uh, which actually manages the, the, the food operations at the grassroots. Uh, it has been proven that they, they, they do a great job. Now, at this point of time, they can actually have a fantastic uh, distribution network backed up by the government that opens up a, a bigger impact array for them. Access to finance. Uh, for this scale up can be another opportunity for uh, a co-investment uh, module between the private sector, the development sector and the government. Government can actually open up distribution mechanism and the private sector and development sector can actually fund these startups uh, um, in, 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 because they, they foresee an immediate growth trajectory because of the need of the situation. Um, this government backed up and integrated growth in itself is an opportunity that that the government needs to uh, look at it um, in a more inclusive manner rather than uh, unfortunately uh, a myopic view. Um, the the last question that um, that uh, Dr. Vakar actually mentioned about how the 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 development sector can actually look at it. Uh, we as an institution are partners with the uh, British Agent Trust, USAID, British Council, Talha is here, 
Princess Trash and the Scottish government. Uh, with Scottish government, we are actually we are deploying their funds uh, into Pakistan for the past uh, two years, social impact funds, and we are just having a conversation with with them, uh, and we are changing the direction of distribution of those funds uh, towards more immediate needs of health and um, digital growth, uh, especially in emerging uh, emergency services uh, and, and and telemedicine. Now. I think all the development sector partners are reassessing their uh, distribution mechanisms and their mandates. And I think at this point of time, uh, an, again, an inclusive approach of the social enterprise community, the not-for-profit community, and the government, along with the development sector partners, is going to reshape the, uh, the, the potential solutions uh, that exist at, at this point, point of time and how these solutions can actually grow in the next six months to a year to 18 months. The, the news about the, the development sector actually allocating funds is great, but I have a, I have, I'm worried about that because majority of the time, the distribution of those funds are extremely myopic and um, biased. I think there needs to be a filter of professionals with a very strong policy frame that actually determines that the funds that are coming right now uh, and needs to be distributed to social enterprises, where it needs to go, how it needs to be channelized. So the duplication of uh, resources and wastage of those resources should be avoided. And optimization of those funds demonstrating qualitative and quantitative impact that is tangible uh, needs to be put in place. And for that, engagement of professionals who understand the social enterprise and not-for-profits and startup sector uh, in uh, decision-making is critical. So I, I, I would uh, really request SDPI to kind of uh, suggest some policy measures. So when these funds actually go to the grassroots, it should not be simply just uh, distributed based on biases and lack of data. Um, I think I would let the uh, the participants speak now. Thank you so much for this opportunity to kind of uh, speak our mind out right now. Thank you. I'd like to thank, comment. Thank you for uh, 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 Yes, sure. Sorry. I really appreciate Faraz Please going go deep on the mechanics of such kind of funding. And uh, I do see more friends here, Amara, I see here, Talha, many others. Uh, I just, and, and on Marshall, everyone is quite an expert in their respective fields. Uh, I believe the issue right now is that the voice of the SMEs has not probably resonated well in the, or echoed well in the power corridors uh, uh, where such policies are right now being made, whether and it is great if we can also, and SDPI perhaps can add great value in this, if we can also consolidate all the information from uh, the donors or bilaterals or multilaterals who are contributing, whether it is, as Faraz was mentioning, the Scottish government and others. And I agree, uh, we have been hearing the mantra of digitalization and uh, digital transformations for over a decade, but nobody had seen it coming so fast and so soon the way it has now. Many uh, who who thought they were uh, very, very digital are also facing challenges, let alone those who never actually went beyond an email. Uh, so my point is that uh, on this digital front, what is the response that we can have from the government so that how we can aid all those who are finding it quite challenging working in a new normal, right? And even after COVID, there would be a new normal again. So and so that so while we are figuring uh, while we uh, can put up some proposal for the financial part but also on this digitalization part that Faraz very rightly pointed out the boom that we are seeing right now where everyone is consuming more data and is more online uh, and different norms of working environment and everything other things are changing you also mentioned uh, Faraz regarding um, startups or businesses that have emerged because of the great need of health and many other services or managed services or remote working or productivity online. Um, uh, that's true, there might be those, but then there are also many of those uh, 
if all of us are sitting here together and we have representatives from the government as well that can talk about those that will be closing down i agree that there is an opportunity and the glass is half full but what can we do other than giving a cash injection which the government is trying right now to those which are closing down uh, in terms whether it is pivoting uh, or whether it is just a temporary relief there are efforts that have singapore and china have taken for supporting startups but of course we do not have the wherewithal or the resources like uh, those countries so these are also a few questions that i wanted to leave you thank you uh, uh, can i just quickly add something sure please go ahead. thank you um I, absolutely uh, fasi your uh, the last point that you mentioned you're absolutely right that there are going to be a lot of uh, startups that are not going to actually have that cut at the edge um that's the whole idea that there, there needs to be a, a group of people who understand this this community very well who could actually see the real see in in every uh, crisis there is blood bath and there are the ones who remain sustain and they surface as the next uh, digital giant or the or, or a company that actually really creates an impact if you remember the previous dot com bubble um, there was there was a catastrophe and um, 70% 70 to 80% of the, the the startups they actually never saw the, the the next day but the the ones who survived that they became the googles and the facebooks and 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 the amazons and the giants who actually really transformed uh, the way of life on, on on this earth, and I think the ecosystem that has developed in Pakistan, be it of social enterprises or be it of of, of the conventional commercial startups, both uh, were supposed to actually see um, a downward trajectory. Now, uh, that downward trajectory was just a natural uh, occurrence of a, any ecosystem, and I think we had a discussion on that. Uh, what has happened right now that that has been fast forwarded so instead of we seeing a gradual demise we have or we've seen a crash in which some really good startups and social enterprises who could have otherwise sustained have, have are, are crashing and burning but if we actually as as an ecosystem and then a group of experts who understand and these startups pick up the the, the 10 percent of the ones who have, who have survived and can really transform the way of life in Pakistan and beyond, that would be a great win. And that can only be done if um, individually, institutionally, and systemically uh, we are aligned and integrated. And that's where I think institutions like SDPI can play a very strong role. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now I will request uh, Talha Chishti to give his take on the questions, please. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you, SDPI. Thank you, Dr. Vakar. And thank you uh, uh, for arranging this kind of meeting. And I think uh, this is this is the most important thing which we are doing at this moment because uh, at this moment everyone is thinking about all those aspects and challenges uh, but it's very important to gather all these things together on the table and especially on the table of sdpi uh, because sdpi has got a, a sdpi can you know act like a bridge between the policy makers and and those who are basically sitting on our side so uh, I, I, and thank you for seeing you. Thank you for us for uh, for providing a good opportunity to talk about. So uh, the, the few words which I'm getting out of this discussion is basically the inclusiveness is basically the resonance going towards the government and, and, and the key challenges which are basically coming at this moment, especially working with social advisors. And that's the thing which, you know, SDPI, SEED and, and, and British Council has been educating that at this moment, along with the growth, I think the most important factor before the COVID and after the COVID and during the COVID uh, would be the sustenance. We, we really want to sustain those organizations, those brave people uh, who actually started uh, these startups and we actually need them to, you know, to sustain. 
and at the same time the second challenge is to you know the sort of advocacy work which we have done with the government to support these startups we really want that work to grow we really want that work not to be to to be reshaped uh, in in the form of different economical packages which are actually coming so one of my biggest concern because at this moment i am working very british council is working very closely with kamyab jawan uh with uh, with usman dar and and there was one program which they were doing uh for the social startups and the startups was to provide loans and and the news which i am i'm, I'm actually having is basically that you know that pc1 most probably is not going to be approved in the that the loans which we were uh, we were trying to provide to the social startups or or to the new businesses or to the potential businesses so one of my greatest concern is that at this moment such type of loans are really important uh for these organizations to to sustain and to have some sort of a financial injection so one thing which british council and we will definitely be getting the voice of all you together uh would be to you know to advocate for 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 such sort of initiatives to keep continue or maybe we need to have more finances into into this side of uh, of of thing because at this moment for example just think about i i was just thinking about two startups uh which were doing brilliantly for the last couple of years and i now i was just imagining uh their situation for example ghalpar so ghalpar was doing brilliant and now at this moment i you can imagine what would be happening to to the to the startup and those people who were engaged uh with that particular startup and similarly there were some other uh incubator that uh, at at some other places so that's one of the challenge you know sustenance and and some of the sustenance of the policies which government which we have been educated and the policies were there uh, on behalf of the government on, be, on on the second thing is basically the development sector as you know that you know the development sector would also be facing challenges and especially the organizations like us especially the organizations who are actually getting funding now most of the funding will be definitely going towards the other streams like health uh like other other areas of uh, major priority and that's where you know the development of sector organizations and the other donors are also getting it difficult to sustain and to uh, and to have to secure those funds so that you know uh, the the intermediary organizations are basically being supported so now linking all these challenges uh, with the development sector so at this moment what exactly is needed is 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 with the help of organization like sppi we need to come up with with a very 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 with very brief with a very uh, few come up with few priority areas in form of a policy framework and that's what you know the donor organizations also require that's what the government also requires so i will request spi to lead that conversation and to come up with like four five priority areas for the social enterprises and for the startups and it should also be conveyed and it should should be passed it over to the government that these are the few four five major areas uh, where you know they they urgently need help and and that's what i have also uh, 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 you know coordinated with usman das team as well that you know you are talking about tiger post you are talking about you know uh, all that uh, supply chain network so that's where you can also involve the startups and the social startups uh, where yeah, they can they can definitely help you in in, in setting up all those uh, logistics and all those things and and one thing which i really want to emphasize and we'll say it like four to five time will be collaboration 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 because at this moment uh, what british council and what other organizations need to do is to come up with very honestly that these are the things i want to do these are the things i have got in my plate please come and you know fill that plate we don't need to have like choti choti masjid we need to come up with a very strong solid sort of a collaboration if we don't do the collaboration at this moment you know then we will definitely this the sort of people we are working with they are, they are definitely going to fall and 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 the key message to the startups and the social startups should also be conveyed that they need they should also be doing sort of a collaboration no one can survive independently at this moment i will request seed and ic and all those organizations so please come up with with a with one framework where you know we all should be collaborating bringing everyone their own resources and believe we when we will gather all these resources at this moment we will have 
we don't need any other resources the sort of expertise at this moment on this platform the 12 people sitting here even if these 12 people start collaborating we don't need any other additional resources so let's collaborate my 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 strong message is is let's collaborate and that's the, that's the sort of message which i am getting i had a conversation with fco defed and all these organization at this moment will definitely preferring uh the collaboration and i'm and upon you know i'm having discussion with defed and will definitely sharing that information uh, with you guys as well because uk is also thinking a lot on on the sustainable so social enterprises and hopefully we will uh, we will definitely be doing some solid work uh, to sustain uh, the social and 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 and, and other startups as well thank you thank you again for see for us and stpi and everyone uh, for joining this call thanks a lot Th thank you uh, so uh, i will now request uh, ms amara farooq malik uh, to give her take uh, on the questions shared i also see uh, fasi is here and uh, and um, so it is such a pleasure to to uh, come and speak at the stpi um main ab aapko na i i want to uh, recap from uh, the scene since the past couple of months and the reason why i had been away was because cepla has been working on uh, constructing its second green building and the reason why i'm mentioning this development is because yesterday i took the difficult decision of closing down the project uh, in these difficult and trying times and i had to uh, give advance payments to the daily wages and i had to uh, pay them off uh, because at this point in time i'm not sure how the situation is going to evolve and what kind of um, a predicament we should be preparing ourselves for economically of course as well as uh, for safety and health uh, from the health point of view but um, the center was was supposed to be a green building that was supposed to house uh, women led businesses that could be social enterprises or businesses and this was supposed to be a small commercial center that could support such ventures now we had to temporarily of course close down the project i do plan to complete it once everything is settled at this point in time i want to uh, connect this situation with something that we faced under the cepla foundation i'm of course representing cepla here uh, i'm representing cepla hub as well as the cepla foundation these are two different entities cepla foundation worked uh, very and what we noticed the uh, uh, blood relief efforts at that time was that everybody cooperated everybody contributed in the initial months initial months in the first month or two months and especially that is fact that they wanted to contribute more uh, they had ran out of resources to contribute and that was when i will i think this was in um, uh, in august there was blood in september september we held a social enterprise movement in which we collected empty water bottles and we requested people in the four provinces youth in the four provinces to collect empty water bottles which uh, we could fill with filtered water and then these could be distributed in the flood affected areas there were separate sops that were created and it was an in, it was a good initiative because it involved the youth there were no resources required people felt productive people were contributing in some form and uh, it was a cross cutting theme between uh, climate change and um, uh, youth development and social entrepreneurship though at that point there was no much to it it was purely done on a volunteer basis and uh, so we learned a lot of things from that experience as well so kehne ka matlab ye why i'm referring to that incident and then coming back to what we are doing right now is that i feel at this point in time we are running in we we are bombarded with the situation in which we are handling too many problems at the same time 
and what i foresee is that in about two months time we are going to be still in the situation and by that time we might have run out of resources now i could have uh, waited for this present lockdown to be over and uh, perhaps then contemplated that i could continue with our construction and complete our project come what may maybe in the next four months or so but i decided not to for two reasons one um, i felt that it was not safe for myself my family and also for the people who are working on the site secondly i felt that these people are going to need jobs and opportunities to work and start to come and work from more in the next coming three months than right now right now the situation should be crisis management and crisis management means that more of health uh, anything that is going to keep free and safe inside their homes i know hum log to is tarah ki baat kar sakte hain not daily wages we can work from on the base uh, sustain on the basis of our uh, savings or, or resources daily wages cannot for them i feel that the government should have a very transparent mechanism of distributing these um, uh, you know these uh, monthly stipends that they're talking about and it has to be done in a very very transparent manner again i keep ref i will refer to the 2010 flood incident at that point a lot of money came into pakistan a lot of donor funds came into pakistan to date we have not seen many of those uh, and also in the 2005 earthquake actually for that matter we have not seen the kind of rehabilitation that should have taken place with that amount of funds uh, and there and a lot of mismanagement was done as far as funds were concerned and this time round as well there is a prime minister's fund that has been set up i feel that it should be very very transparent opportunities for social enterprises or social entrepreneurs can be created through this fund as well i feel something should be connected to social entrepreneurship in this in fact i've been thinking since i we, we wound up the the construction project the of our community center i'm actively thinking about how we engage young people under seplus platform through a social enterprise model and do some kind of community work during these covid times we are also contemplating what we can do on the ground um of course sdpi is working at the policy level we are thinking if we can possibly do something actively by engaging young people um of course these are um very difficult times it's easier to come up with the ideas and then implement very hard um it's very very difficult um yesterday when i went out um i felt that every time i'm going out at with gaps of about 5 6 days i i need to go out for groceries when i go out after every 5 to 6 days time i feel a uh, greater urgency i feel greater um, amount of uh, degree of fear um when i go out not just with myself with people around uh day yesterday day or day before i think yesterday day before i went out i actually saw um that people were out on the streets who were unemployed they were just asking for money now these were not beggars these are people who worked and i feel that it's so important to engage these people in some kind of work there is a social enterprise opportunity here they need to be engaged in some kind of work because i fear that if people will just handing just be handing them stuff to eat or just giving them envelopes of money these people will not be able to come back and work in four months time that is something that i've it's something that happens it happened in the uk as well they used to getting it, it's there it's feared in the us as well that right now if uh, people are going to be getting government handouts which are going to be more than what they can possibly earn then there is going to be a lack of motivation to go back to work and i fear that in back in a place like pakistan in our country that kind of a situation is very much more likely to happen um than in the uk and us uh, i don't know if i'm giving any suggestion here or i'm allowed because um i've also <laughs> been a little caught off guard but with this meeting um i've just been done uh, i just got done doing my exams they're sitting at home making parathas for them and now this meeting has come up 
So the challenges for women who are entrepreneurs and who are sitting at home are, believe me, many fold. Uh, and the government should also look into that angle, that if uh, they can possibly support or create opportunities at this crisis time for women who are now sitting at home because they do want to be productive and they're productive uh, participants of society and they must be engaged actively in some kind of um, uh, a platform or a program in which uh, they feel they are being. So thank you very much, um, um, Ahad, if uh, there's anything, if anybody has any questions or thoughts, let me know. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, I think we, we will come uh, back to the question and answer session. Uh, I'll just like Dr. Bukhar to uh, give his uh, point of view regarding the discussion. Uh, and then, of course, we can have the question and answer session. Th thank you, Ahad, and all very important points. I, I was taking very detailed notes, and it's been a very rich discussion. So, so thank you to uh, uh, Amara, Fasi, Adil Saab, Faraz Saab, everyone you know has spoken. Talha uh, has spoken very well. Uh, so, I, I think just just two points, and and others are free to uh, chip in. I understand that people may have questions to ask to your panel. Uh, maybe I think one of the opportunities is, as I said that uh, the foreign assistance package which uh, economic affairs division is trying to shape up uh, we can send the output from today's discussion to uh, uh, mr hamad azhar sahab uh, really quickly so that he sort of uh, gets a feel of the constraints current constraints faced by the social enterprise sector and what are those two or three minimum uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, support interventions which this group is uh, uh, maybe advocating for uh, and in line with uh, Tala Saab as he said that he's already in touch with Mr. Osman Dar of uh, Kamyab Jawan. I think it, if, if we can try to reach maximum such cabinet members uh, today and maybe in the coming week it will be uh, very timely. Uh, I think the point by uh, Faraz Saab and uh, probably uh, uh, Mr. Talat Chishti also uh, alluded to that. Uh, we can, uh, yes, uh, come up with four or five priority areas with your help and probably uh, uh, also showcase what are the strengths of social enterprises in those areas, uh, number one, and number two, uh, how is it that government can help or uh, help harness those trends, per, uh, perhaps through public procurement, through making social enterprise partners in the SAS interventions, um, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think one of the uh, interesting things that came out uh, was that uh, we need to look more closely into uh, what Adil Saab was saying that uh, yes, government is currently overstretched, but government is also open to new ideas under the Ignite Seed Fund. Uh, I think I heard very similar and welcoming uh, tone from the Digital Pakistan program as well. And, uh, and, and they have also asked us to convene a similar meeting for which I, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Ahad and team will be requesting most of you to join. I think Digital Pakistan program is more interested in how can the e-commerce, uh, uh, social enterprise working in the e-commerce space uh, help their uh, mandate, their agenda uh, going forward. I, I think they are also playing a role in the training of the Corona Relief Tiger Force, uh, the, the, the volunteers force which Prime Minister is trying to uh, raise. Uh, so, so I've, I've noted down most of these things, and 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 uh, and and just just want to thank at this moment, and let, let let's continue uh, with the discussion. Maybe people have questions to ask to the panel. Uh, so, uh, I think Dr. Imran Khalid wants to ask a question, please. Um, 
Yes, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, I guess some of these things have already been discussed, but if I were to ask uh, some of our guests to just name uh, a couple of highlights of things that they think are working, the positives uh, that they see in their own organizations uh, right now, and a couple of things that they would uh, look to the government for, or they would look to uh, perhaps a think tank like ours to help them resolve. So what, what might be the two things that they see as positives and what are the two things that they see as uh, challenges or negatives and uh, and the challenges could be such that we can perhaps work on uh, in the coming days and weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, do we have any other question? So uh, I think we can have one more round uh, regarding the question that uh, Dr. Imran has asked. Uh, so we can start off uh, maybe uh, from uh, Faraz, please. Thank you, Imran. Uh, thank you, Ahad. Uh, Bakar sir, thank you so much for noting down um, uh, extremely relevant points. And uh, we look forward to kind of assisting you uh, as a group to uh, you know see some of them actually coming to fruition. Um, in terms of our own organization and, and how we are actually coping up with, we've got a two set of portfolios. We've got some mid-level companies, um, and then we have got a portfolio of uh, uh, social enterprises that we have uh, funded and supported. And our third uh, focus is, again, ecosystem work with the development sector partners. Uh, the development sector partner in the, in, in the ecosystem work is, uh, going to dynamically change based on the needs uh, of today and tomorrow and, and short term, short to medium term. So that is uh, a trajectory that is going to shape up with the passage of time. But what this uh, crisis has done as, to us as an organization, specifically for mid-level companies, is um, a, an absolute focus on cash flow management. Because uh, now, prior to let's say December or around about December, uh, the situation, um, the objective, the growth tra trajectory, the uh, uh, 2020, 2020 and 2021 plan for uh, growth was of different dynamics, but now it's a matter of survival. And then what we have done as an organization is uh, looked at uh, the internal partners and, and colleagues uh, and, 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 and stakeholders and external. And we have kind of identified the ones who are absolutely in dire need of um, funds and made sure that there is no discontinuity at that segment. The ones like um, Amara mentioned, the one on, on the daily wages, the one who are absolutely at the bottom of the pyramid, we have, um, put in place mechanisms that are uh, securing their continuity for the next 12 to 16 months. And then we have absolutely tried looking at the expense side of it, and uh, we're trying to reduce it to at least 40 to 50% in terms of travel, in terms of uh, overheads. So uh, we could stretch the dollar and the rupee and the pound, whatever we have, to, uh, uh, to a much longer um, frame. The third thing we have done is um, looked at the situation as glass half full and see, okay, what are the strengths that we have, uh, we have at this point of time between our internal stakeholders and our external stakeholders and how we can actually capitalize on that. Uh, one of the strengths, of course, was uh, the, the content that we have, we, we have accumulated. Um, and uh, the access to the grassroots communities and women entrepreneurs, and how we can actually convert the, the physical distribution, uh, uh, the existing ones, to the digital one and continue the same impact. And that's the kind of areas we're focusing on. What we're looking towards government and, let's say, institutions like uh, an SGPI is uh, a more integrated and um, inclusive uh, rapid implementation of creation and implementation of policies. 
So previously, we used to look at the same thing uh, without the word rapid. And now, probably, uh, just because uh, like Amara and Fasi and each one of us have kind of emphasized, we, we don't have much time, especially at uh, the bottom of the pyramid segment, because uh, probably at the uh, mid level or as you see bc we might be able to survive for a, another year uh, but the bottom of the pyramid sustenance um, is a very limited so the word rapid um, is, is is critical in terms of creation and implementation of policies that would actually uh, you know create that impact at the grassroots so that's what we are looking at uh, i don't know whether it makes any sense but thank you Thank you. Thank you for us. So, uh, Talha, maybe you can go next. So I just I will try to make it very concise because I'm 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 moving around, so that's why maybe that internet connection is is really bad. So I was just saying that with the passive time and within these challenging times, my my belief on on social enterprise has has increased exponentially, especially on those people who are actually working in these fields because. Uh, he he he. Those people who are special to you, because for example. I was working with almost 600 social and creative entrepreneurs during the Dice Fellowship program. So during these challenges time, I actually had a chance to have a conversation with them. And you know, I couldn't find a single one who said like, okay, and now I can't, I can't find any business. I'm sitting at home. I don't have anything to do. Everyone was up to something. You know, everyone was doing some sort of work. Everyone was adapting to the situation, and and that, and I believe that's. That's the beautiful part of. That's the most important part of the social uh, enterprise and 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 obviously the startup culture. So what what we are doing as part of British Council, uh, one is basically we are reaching out to the organisations to build collaboration, bringing our resources and asking them to bring their resources. And you know, with these different ingredients together, let's come up with some recipe. Let's come with some up. Let's come up with some really delicious dish for these uh, social and creative entrepreneurs. And then the second thing is like we made a good investment for the last one and a half years on different online platforms. So you know when you are doing face-to-face -face, uh, sort of meetings, so for each online choosing or thing, its importance come ho jati hai. But now we are really fortunate that we have got that online platform. Uh, but from next week onward, we are going live, bringing all experts and uh, different mentors, different gurus on board, and reaching out uh, to, to different social and creative entrepreneurs. Helping them in these challenging times, developing a lot of digital content to support them, to you know, actually sharing with them like what are the means, what are the ways uh, you can you know work around to uh, and 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 find us and be adaptable. Uh, so but we are putting a lot of investment, lot of our resources on now online platform. And then the second thing is most importantly that as part of British Council, my major mandate for the next one month is to reach out to everyone. Uh, show our resources and ask them to put their resources uh, with us together and see how we can come up with a very solid, strong plan. And I believe that the sort of people working in this uh, uh, ecosystem, I, I I have absolutely no doubt at all that uh, we will come up with a very solid, very brilliant thing, and we will definitely be able to sustain these heroes, which we which I call the which we call them as social entrepreneurs. They will be. They will definitely be sustainable. I have a very strong hope in them, and Pakistan should put a lot of hope on them. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. This is Hania Shah from SDPI. Uh, I have a very small question from uh, Madam Amara Malik, uh, if she can hear me. Uh, I just want to understand uh, that who are the people who have access to such initiatives? For instance, while working towards any initiative in these social enterprises programs, which age group do they focus on specifically? Or we can also put it at like uh, whether they aim at those people having more digital literacy. Um, I just have a very small comment uh, here as well that uh, when uh, when it comes to uh, just a general awareness about such uh, social enterprises and uh, even just uh, a common thing like digital literacy, it's almost negligible. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Thank you. I hope I, I hope I don't trail off while I'm speaking because I have a very bad internet connection here. Um, thank you, Hania, for that question. Um, um, again, I think it's important to tell you what uh, our background in CEPLA has been as far as social enterprises and their development is concerned. Um, 
since the past 12 years sepla has been working online and we have 11 websites so our we are very much digital and we work online as well our teams are online um our, our team is scattered all over the world and they are they work online so um when you say that what kind of an age group do social enterprises focus on and what kind of areas do they focus on i think that's the kind of experimentation that we were trying to um pull off by going offline and working um when in a brick and mortar um uh, building solution because we thought that we felt that in the past 10 years uh, social enterprises though have the opportunity of being able to have an outreach uh, through di di digital means uh, were not taken as seriously as uh, organizations which were based in brick and mortar uh, buildings and for that reason we wanted to venture out and um, have a, a commercial space of our own where we could hold our activities and conduct our trainings um, I can tell you that three years ago, some of the, so basically CEPLA works with children, youth and women, and we also work at the policy level. Um, when we worked with women, particularly we uh, conducted online training sessions with Canaid College, we had a mixed response in 2017. Um, at that time, we were the first ones to conduct any kind of an online training activity uh, with Canaid students. And the kind of response we got was encouraging, but at the same time, we had a lot of difficulties because perhaps we were too new uh, in that venture at that point in time. And perhaps this is a better time to um, try it out again, because at this point, everybody's sitting at home. So there is an opportunity here right now. And now people are more well-versed in, in terms of uh, online payments. They use Jazz Cash. They have um, internet banking now. They're used to that. Uh, they weren't as used to it three years ago, even though I think that, you know, we've, we've had online payment mechanisms much, much before that as well. But I tell you that practically in the field, we, we face challenges. I, I feel that now is an opportunity to explore that more. So um, there are so many areas in which uh, uh, social enterprises can have um, useful and um, productive um, interventions. So the other areas that we are working on are climate change. And for that, uh, we, we generally have to work with uh, housing societies and uh, government bodies. So um, where we can, we can work with youth and we can work with children, we can work with women, we can also work with organizations as social enterprises. I think, in fact, in one, of, one or the other um, STPI uh, policy forums as well, I mentioned this that for some reason, as, as social enterprises are equated with SMEs. And they should not be equated with SMEs because social entrepreneurship is a concept. And through that concept, much larger issues can be tackled, such as climate change, such as gender, such as unemployment. So equating them with small and medium enterprises is not really doing justice to the scope of social enterprises. So um, as far as seeing that which age groups that you can you could work with, uh, I think that they should they, there really is no limit to that. Yes, it was considered that generally younger people would be running social enterprises in Pakistan as opposed to um, a more mature uh, age group but um, the mature age group would be able to sustain those social enterprises more because they would have had experience of having worked in various sectors or at least some other sectors before trying out the social enterprise so for example in our case sepla has two three parallel sister concerns that we run together uh, which all support each other so though one is a social enterprise one is a consultancy one is uh, an ngo one is a business and these are these work together in the form of a consortium, which is how they're able to sustain. Even if one is um, uh, ha has uh, any difficulties, the other is able to pull it up. So I think that um, these things can only be done if you uh, if social enterprises are able 
able to um, run and sustain and go beyond um, a couple of years. Normally, you know, you've seen startups also, they, uh, the, the failure rate of startups is very high, unfortunately, because, and that's the case for all uh, enterprises also. It's not just for social enterprises. Of course, the challenges for social enterprises are, are much more as compared to um, uh, businesses. Uh, because, um, uh, of course, business, uh, you know, your clients are not able to uh, assess or understand uh, which angle you're coming from. And, you know, we've had so many discussions about this as well. But I think this is a very good opportunity for social enterprises right now in this COVID scenario. This really is an opportunity for social enterprises. This is not a downside. So um, right now, if you have to give any suggestions to the government as far as which two areas to work on, and which two areas not to perhaps work on. I think the, the suggestion that I can may perhaps uh, give is that um, they should not be, and I think somebody also mentioned this, and I feel very strongly about this myself, that there should be no duplication of efforts. Um, uh, this is, uh, everybody seems to be doing their own little bit, and ek hi ghar ke andar teen log, teen logon ka Access ek ghar tak hai, ek kareeb aadmi ke ghar tak hai, so everybody would be going to that one house. Not seeing that there would be 50 other houses where nobody has reached yet. So that kind of, um, um, uh, you know, scattered approach towards uh, um, uh, giving out relief or giving out um, support should not be there. And um, this is the time when, um, uh, you know, the government can consolidate uh, the information of social enterprises and, and in fact, seek from these social enterprises that in which areas can they support the government. So, for example, perhaps not every organization will be able to go out into the, into the field. Uh, CEPLA has moved away from field work and we are, we are moving also more towards uh, publications and policy work. So maybe reaching out to social enterprises, but we connect with women. Uh, we have a large network of 2,000 plus women who are who are associated with us, and these are women who are privileged women. So um, I think it would be useful for the government at this point to uh, create a platform where social enterprises can register right now. A database of these enterprises can be created. And the, the strengths of these social enterprises and, and small profiles of these enterprises can be put up so that the government knows who to reach across to and who to engage for which particular part of the relief work or part of the rehabilitation work or part of the empowerment work of uh, people who uh, will require uh, employment opportunities in the future. As far as what not to do is concerned, um, I really think this is not the time to uh, do politics over the given scenario. I think everybody across the board should be uh, taken on board as stakeholders, as Pakistanis, we're all stakeholders. So everybody should be taken on board and uh, we should just move forward um, in uh, through collaborations, definitely. I don't know, I hope, Hani, I've answered your question. Yes, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, if we don't have any uh, more questions, then uh, probably I, I I'd like to go back to Dr. Bakar uh, for the closing remarks. So, Ahad, just to uh, take you from you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, let let me let me start by uh, acknowledging and thanking uh, Amara for these very insightful thoughts. I think she has given us just the right kind of uh, homework which we all need, need to do as a community. Uh, I think I would uh, eagerly take uh, uh, Farah Saab's offer and uh, I think it will be important now to, of course, uh, think uh, very innovatively of what we can do as a platform community and to be not just ambassadors for so many uh, good social entrepreneurs out there, but uh, also be a very uh, strong voice for uh, uh, bringing support uh, to them. And I'm glad that he's engaging with uh, uh, British Asian Trust and, of course, other colleagues uh, in, in, in UK as well. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, uh, that, that his, his idea around uh, probably uh, seeking advice from 
other uh, such platforms on how they are positioning themselves in this crisis and post-crisis phase is is something that uh, we can uh, we can have a follow-up call on and all of these people who have met probably can invite some other external stakeholders as well to uh, to to discuss i think talha uh, pointed out towards something very important which we should also do in a follow-up call and probably invite those social enterprises who were actually uh, doing very decent work uh, just days ago and probably now sustainability is a key issue for them uh, i know that uh, faraz pointed about cash flow management being the key issue and uh, some of the enterprise may now have gone well beyond uh, the cash flow management being a crisis for them and of course uh, sustainability or, or day-to-day -day survival being the foremost challenge and Talasa uh, mentioned uh, a name such as Gharpar. Probably, I think it will be best to give a voice to such enterprises and know from them uh, directly of what kind of support uh, they need so that we can be their voice uh, in the policy corridors. Uh, I think uh, uh, time is also very opportune now, given that uh, the government is set to announce this year's federal budget well before schedule as per the news which is coming to us. So whatever we package out of this uh, meeting today, and maybe in case there is a follow-up meeting in the coming days, uh, we should readily communicate the same to the finance division as well as uh, uh, FBR and state banks so that uh, uh, all the relevant institutions are on the same page regarding the pre-budget proposals uh, for uh, social enterprises. Um, I think I will just request that those of us who are in touch or happen to uh, meet or come across uh, any friends from the government, it will be best if you can share any developments that may be happening. I know that uh, Faraz Saab is working very closely with the Sindh government. Uh, Tala Saab is working with uh, Kamyab Jawan Pakistan, Ehsas program and other initiatives in the federal government. Uh, uh, Amara Sahiba also continues to work very closely with the Punjab government. And I'm sure that there would be uh, other, other friends who are uh, helping uh, the public sector. So I'll, I'll, I'll just request that whatever developments that are taking place uh, for the social enterprises or whosoever, which, whichever enterprise you feel has been able to uh, convince or make inroads with the government, please uh, showcase that case study or success story so that we can spread the news around for others in uh, the ecosystem. Uh, and and uh, I think uh, with this, I would again uh, perhaps thank you and maybe we'll have to bother you again for uh, your inputs and comments on the written output from this meeting, uh, as well as perhaps a follow-up meeting on uh, several of the questions raised uh, in this meeting. Uh, uh, a huge thanks for your time and attention. Thank you. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here. And uh, of course, uh, two of uh, the, the, the speakers have already uh, left, uh, Fasi and Nadeel. Uh, I'll, I, I have personally thanked them uh, on WhatsApp. So uh, thank you. And uh, uh, of course, I'm looking forward to hearing soon again. And uh, we'll be sharing uh, the press release uh, today. And the uh, policy brief for this meeting uh, will be shared in the coming week.